if you are looking into projects that make blockchain easier for everyone, you're going to want to hear about ArcBlock and a token ABT. This token is changing how decentralized applications are built, but is doing so in a way that even non-developers can appreciate. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I've been specializing in product, new technologies, crypto stocks and divergence trading strategies for the last 10 years. Today we're diving deep into ArcBlock and the token ABT. We want to learn what it is all about, why it's a project worth paying attention to. And of course, we'll be checking out some charts to see where this token might be heading. Knowing about a product and its technology is very important. We'll start there before moving into price analysis. It's super important to understand what you're investing in. I always make sure to give you a quick rundown on the project itself, because knowing the fundamentals of a crypto is key to making smart investment decisions. And if you like my video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to get regular updates. All right, let's jump right in. Let's talk about ArcBlock and the token ABT. In simple terms, ArcBlock is like a toolkit that helps developers create decentralized applications that we also call dApps more easily. It uses both blockchain technology and cloud computing. Think of it as building with Legos, but for the blockchain, developers can pick and choose components or services that are reusable, which saves them a ton of time. Now, ArcBlock is also a flexible and evolving ecosystem. It uses something called Blockets, which can connect to any data source and handle both on-chain and off-chain tasks. That means it works with different blockchain protocols, giving developers freedom without getting stuck in one only system. Basically, ArcBlock is designed to make life easier for developers. They can build applications that are fast, user-friendly, and can handle lots of users all at once. And it's not locked into one only blockchain. So if better tech comes along, they can switch over easily. Now, before we dive into the details of the price trend, I want to talk about some general stats. As of today, ArcBlock has a market cap of around $150 million, with about 98.6 million ABT tokens in circulation. The typical hold time for this token is around 12 days, which gives us a little insight into how traders and investors are engaging with it. Now let's talk about the fun part, the all-time high. Artblock's highest price was about $4.72, but right now is trading at $1.53. So if ABT were to return to that all-time high, you're looking at a roughly 3x growth potential. All right, it's time to look at the price trends now. So, we are diving into the monthly candle chart for IBT today because this token has data going all the way back to 2018 on some exchanges. I pulled this data on TradingView and while it's paired with Tether instead of the US dollar, it's totally fine. It still gives us a full view of ABT's price history on a large scale. Now, let's walk through what we are seeing together. First off, we have the launch, which, like most tokens, comes with a big dump. That's pretty common because early investors from the ICO or the pre-sales are taking their profits. After that, we notice a small surge as people expect the price to recover, but it eventually calms down and stabilizes for a few years. What's interesting is the massive bull flag pattern that forms later, followed by another one. These are important because they can signal potential upward movement, fast forward to where we are now, 
and the chart has started to dip again. At this point, I want to zoom in and look closer at the search on the weekly candle chart. This will give us a clearer picture of recent price action, which we can study to see where ABT might be headed next. Now let's take a look at where things took a turn. If you focus on the three or four bull flags we had in a row, which were pushing the price higher, you'll also notice something crucial, a reversal bearish divergence forming at the top. This is a red flag that signaled the end of that upward trend, meaning we were about to head back down. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. As the price dropped, it created a small hidden bearish divergence here, hinting that we might see further downside. But here's where it gets more interesting. As the price moved lower and formed a new low, it also revealed something on the chart. We can see two levels of lows, and if we draw a line connecting them, these two lows are actually moving upward. The second low was a higher low. Now, if you look at the MACD line, it tells us a different story. The same two lows on the MACD are moving downward, which means this is a hidden bullish divergence. The big question now is, will we see another new low on the price chart that could invalidate this divergence or will the trend hold? In order to answer that, let's zoom in on this section by looking at the daily candle chart for a closer view of the price action. This gives us more detail on the ups and downs and right away we can spot another hidden bearish divergence. This one is concerning because if it plays out, it could spell trouble for the price. The target we've drawn suggests we might head lower, even close to zero. Now, don't worry, I don't think it will actually drop to zero, but we might get uncomfortably close. Now take a look at this. There also is a second divergence, and this one is bullish, and this one is not hidden. It's a reversal divergence. If you check the two lows of this divergence, I've already traced a line based on the level of the second low on the MACD line, and by seeing where it intersects with the MACD before the first low, we get a potential price target that's much more optimistic, around $4.40 by January 2025, which is almost three times the current price. So we are in a bit of an uncomfortable spot right now, because we're looking at mixed signals on the chart. In one hand, we have a bearish divergence that's waiting to play out, and on the other hand, we have a reversal divergence that's also sitting there waiting for its moment. Here's the thing. One of these is a hidden bearish divergence, which means it could actually get cancelled if the price manages to push up high enough. If we get a new higher high, we'll have to recalculate that bearish divergence and it won't have as much of an impact. So the question is, which of these two divergences will play first? To get a clearer picture and hopefully answer the big question, let's zoom into the 4-hour candle chart. This will give us a better view of the recent price action, the short-term trends, and maybe even hint at where the price could go in the near future. Now, looking at the chart, we can see there were some hidden bearish divergences, but I won't bother drawing them out again since they've already played out. What I do want to focus on is this reversal bullish divergence. It's small, but don't let that fool you. It could still have a big impact. If we use the same method as we did before to calculate its target, we're looking at a big jump upward that actually aligns pretty closely with the trajectory of our bullish reversal divergence that we spotted on the weekly chart. So that's definitely a good sign. But even better, we can extend this divergence further, connecting to some of the earlier lows. If that's the case, 
the target price for this one could be even higher. Now, if we switch back to the daily candle chart, you'll notice that the bearish hidden divergence we were concerned about earlier will need to be recalculated based on that new high. Of course, it doesn't mean it's completely cancelled. But if the price continues forming bullish divergences, whether hidden or reversals, that bearish divergence will get weaker and weaker over time. One thing we should keep in mind, though, is the worst case scenario. We could still see that giant hidden bearish divergence play out first. And if that happens, the price would likely take a pretty big dip. But here's the thing, it probably wouldn't be enough to cancel the bullish reversal divergence we've been talking about. So even in the worst case scenario, I think we might see the price drop first, but then it would likely recover a bit later. Okay, guys, that's all that I have for now. So I want you to remember that this is crypto and you always need to be extra cautious when we talk about crypto. Even what I say, don't take it as facts. Always do your own research. I can make mistakes and my trading strategies are never guaranteed. So always also have a great risk management plan. You're welcome to comment if you see something I've missed or if you disagree or if you agree with my predictions. Your feedback is always welcome. Let me know also if you want me to dive into a specific crypto for you. I'll be happy to do so. If you find this video helpful, like, share and subscribe to get regular updates. Until next time, keep an eye on the trends, stay curious and let's navigate these crypto waves together.